356 Porsche engine, early one, 1600 cubic centimeter engine, normal, three piece case, not a two piece case, which was previous to this. And here we have all the parts disassembled and cleaned. First we had to make sure what we're dealing with as far as standard sizes go. We had to measure the crankshaft to make sure what size it is and uh, luckily for us it's a standard size crankshaft. It has never been turned because in some cases if the crank's turned the bearings have to be smaller on the inside. If the case has been remachined the bearings have to be bigger on the outside but in this case it's all standard. The bearings are standard outside, the standard on the inside, and we we're quite lucky everything fits perfect. Then the connecting rods is the next thing. There we ran into a slight problem. These original connecting rods are no longer available. And here's the problem. We go over here to the connecting rods. We found that we could still buy new connecting rods. Exactly the same size, but you see the difference? The little tab, the locating tab, is now on the right side instead of the left side. So, in order to use them, all four connecting rods have to be slightly remachined to locate a slot on the opposite side. And that's what we're doing now. So if you bear with me, we'll use a die grinder and we'll relocate the bearings. This process has to be repeated eight times, twice for every, twice for every bearing shell. See how that fits now? Perfect, right? Now we have to also do the opposite side. This has to be done carefully because we cannot have we cannot have the bearing moving in either direction rotationally or from side to side so now after doing this to each connecting rod all four of them we can then go ahead and get our crankshaft ready to install. Okay, we now have the crankshaft in a position where we can put the rods on the crank, right? Yeah. In order to do that, we have to look at the rods. These numbers should match. And also these other single numbers is the order they go in. You don't necessarily have to go back in the same order as long as these numbers connect. You could go back to the same order if we were using the old pistons and sleeves, which we're not going to use. So these can go into any position as long as the part number faces up. And when installing connecting rods, Always use new bear, uh, nuts. This is very important. Old nuts do deteriorate. So we always use new nuts. And we hand tighten it first, and then we find out what the proper torque is on those. At this point, we're ready to install the connecting rods. 
remembering to uh, use brand new connecting rod nuts and uh, to lubricate the bearing slightly before we install them and to use the proper numbers. Now we have a number, what is this, number four, yeah, number four, so number three would be at the bottom and we have a number three right here and here. They will go at the bottom or the flywheel end you might say. And we do this, so we just hand tighten them for now till we get them all installed. And then we start them later, we're just hand tightening these right now. Disregard the old nuts. All numbers are correctly in order and lined up. Now the next thing we do is we torque these nuts to 33 foot pounds without dropping it off. First we go to 20 20 still good right thirty three is the proper torque right and you don't want it fly on the device. The ones on the outside are a little bit easier. 33. Okay. Learn these three. I'm just afraid it's not in the vice very many. When torquing bolts it's good to use the shortest extension possible so you don't have any flex, but in this case we're okay. So that's done. Rods are all smooth, working smoothly. Yeah, slightly lubricated and now we're ready to prepare the crankshaft prior to installing it into one of the crankcases. It goes into a crankcase half first. But before we can do that, we have to install this bearing right here. The drive for the oil pump and the drive for the distributor. And that will be our next project. Cut.